Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to go back a little bit. We are going to revisit some Math Hammer, something I haven't really done in a while. Uh, but the new Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome is full of fun and interesting things, so I thought I would take a look at the movement nonsense that this army is capable of. Um, definitely is one of my favorite books right now, and uh, it, I think it is now what I kind of wanted it to be the first time around. So without further ado, let's start looking at uh, what we can do movement-wise in this battle tome. So, um, we have some buffs that are going to be available to everyone, and then other buffs which are only going to be available to certain races or units in the battle tome. Uh, things that are just for everybody, the advance in formation order, adding three inches to movement, and if you take the Misthaven sub-faction, uh, you can pick uh, up to three units to move an extra d6 inches in your hero phase, and uh, 2d6 if they are mounted units. That is a very powerful ability. Um, you can only do that if the unit is more than 12 inches away from enemy units, so this is going to be mostly useful early on in the game when there's not a ton of stuff in the middle of the board, and probably a bit later on in the game where you can uh, yeah, get around a little bit more easily because some of the board has really been cleared out of enemies. Uh, and then, of course, uh, mid-game is going to be more about that movement kind of around the edges with this and, you know, it, stealing objectives and all of those sorts of things, giving you advantages there. Things specifically for humans, Pontifex Zenestra has a prayer that can give you plus two inches board-wide to all of your humans. Now, it's a prayer that is... Uh, successfully chanted on a three, so this is going to be a third of the time, meeting probably two turns out of five a game, that you don't get this buff. So not being able to control it and get it when you want it is going to be a problem. Um, up next, we got the Free Guild Command Core. Uh, Wholly within 12 inches of them, you add one to run and charge. Uh, Wild Form is a spell that gives you a 3d6 charge instead of 2d6. Uh, Free Guild Command Core, for some reason I wrote on here twice. Uh, and then the Cavalier Marshal, uh, when he uses the Finest Hour heroic action, he adds three inches to himself and other uh, Free Guild Cavalier units. Uh, within 12 inches of him. So that's actually a pretty big bubble, uh, but, you know, it's only happening once per game. Extra three minute, uh, three inches to charging is huge, though. That really gets you across the board. All right, other, like, just shenanigans that Cities of Sigmar can do. Uh, you have the counter charge command, I'm sorry, order, um, Let's you just make a charge move at the end of the enemy movement phase, or at the end of the enemy charge phase. Uh, also very powerful. It, you know, lets you get extra units into the enemy and uh, you know, generally kind of make a mess of things for them and you know, make them not be able to quite dictate combat as much as they would like to. Living City is going to let you ambush units, so deploying in reserve and then coming on the board later on six inches from the board edge and uh, more than nine away from enemies. For humans, we have the Fiery Temper uh, command trait that lets you reroll charges for your general, and if they successfully charge, other units uh, within 12 inches of them can also reroll their charges that turn. 
For your elves, you've got Swift Disengage that lets you retreat after fighting in the combat phase. So it lets you kind of hit him and stick and move. Uh, you can also combine that with the other uh, elf order to fight first. So you can charge in, fight, get out of dodge before your opponent has any opportunity to do anything. Uh, Dreadlord on Black Dragon. That uh, lets you reroll charges for Orders of Pentis. I believe it's within 12 inches of the Dreadlord. Uh, and the that also affects the Dreadlord himself. He is also Order Serpentis. So he's always able to reroll his charges, which is pretty powerful. Um, rerolls definitely extend the uh, you know, average range that you're going to be able to uh, hit charges on. All right, and then we have a few units that have baked in special abilities on their war scrolls. We've got our wild core hunters. They get a pre-game move, so they just get to you know make a normal move uh, before the game begins. Your steam tank and steam tank commander can run, shoot, and charge if they uh, send power to the wheels. Your dark riders can also run, shoot, and charge, but they just do that all the time. Uh, and then the musicians in the army also uh, add plus one to run in charge. Those are only going to be on your dwarf and elf units, however. All right, so let's look specifically at your dwarves and uh, what it, uh, you're going to be able to do with them. They they're in, they're just all infantry across the board, apart from like gyrocopters and gyro bombers. Um, so they're available buffs, Misthaven, advanced information, and the musicians in units. For your hammerers, I know on the war scroll in the book and on the war scroll card, it doesn't have command on it, uh, but they actually do have command. Uh, they uh, issued a rata on that. So your base move uh, on this, uh, just you know, without running or charging, uh, you're going to get a minimum of 8 inches, so the 4-inch uh, base move on the War Scroll. Uh, this is just assuming rolling a d6, uh, rolling a 1 on Misthaven, and then uh, Advanced Information for an additional 3 inches gets you up to 8. Your average with that uh, is going to be 10.5, so 10 or 11, and then a maximum of 13 inches, which... Uh, that is certainly quite a bit of hustle on those short, stubby little legs. When we add a run into the mix, uh, your minimum uh, goes to 10 inches because uh, you get that extra one from the musician. Uh, average 14.5 and your maximum goes to 20 inches, which is hilarious. Um, dwarves on foot moving 20 inches in a turn is just bonkers. Uh, then looking at charges, uh, that's going to extend us out to 11 inches, 18, five, and then, uh, 26 inch maximum charge distance, uh, in total. That's, you know, including your, uh, move and Miss Uh, so very easily with this, um, uh, a lot of battle plans are going to line you up um at a minimum of 18 inches from the enemy so when you're nine inches from enemy territory so if your opponent is right up to the line um you are going to be able to just alpha strike with your dwarves on top of one uh on average very consistently which is uh that doesn't seem like that is uh what should happen but you know it's uh just what this book does. And, you know, the dwarves are the slowest element of this book. And, you know, with these things, you can easily alpha strike with them. Uh, so, um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> when you're, uh, you know, uh, at 22 inches on the uh, scenarios where you deploy a little bit further apart, it is going to be a bit harder to hit that charge. But if you you know, use your command point reroll if needed, or a uh, 
triumph to reroll that you can fairly consistently get that as well even on those uh, longer deployed missions all right for our elves uh, they have the same buffs available so you basically just add two inches to all of the infantry because uh, they're base six move everything else otherwise would be the same um, your drake spawn knights their average move um, their average uh, threat range that is um, I'm just at this point just looking at you know what your average move plus charge is going to look like your drake spawn knights are going 28 inches on average um, your drake spawn chariots uh, 27 because they don't have that extra one from the musician uh, then your scourge runner chariots going 29 and your dreadlord going 31. Um, so what does that mean really consistently across the board you're going to be able to alpha strike easily with elves uh, and that's just the you know being able to consistently get most of your army across the board on turn one if not all of your army is just i mean that is uh that stuff that iron jaws does and not many other armies um i'm really confused when i'm looking at this as to why everybody is like looking at like fusiliers and trying to shoot the enemy off the board when you just have this crazy movement available to you and then you know with elves you have commands to uh strike first and there's other abilities that let you strike first as well um you know particularly the uh for humans when you have uh free guild cavaliers and the cavalier marshal um you know if the marshal is able to get in a charge all the other cavaliers near him are also going to be able to strike first so you know you can just throw your whole army into the opponent and like wipe a lot of stuff before uh they have a chance to go um you know if you build things around uh the offensive movement power that is in this army uh it can do some crazy things uh getting really crazy dark riders they're able to run and charge so their average charge distance uh threat range is going to be 36.5 inches so considering that the board is 60 inches wide you can just kind of deploy these guys on the corner and it reliably hit the middle of the board uh, that's very very powerful um, also they have uh, missile weapons uh, they have their crossbows to shoot at the enemy so uh, that's also giving you a bunch of uh, extra utility with these guys they're not that powerful in melee but uh they're really good to harass and pin and uh generally just mess up your enemy's plans all right humans are where things get just absolutely bonkers um if you know a 36 inch threat range on dark riders wasn't crazy enough uh so we've got this Tavin advanced information and the free guild command core available to you that are just kind of static things all the time um conditionally uh you can also get pontifex sinestra and wild form and the cavalier marshal uh cavalier marshal is once per game but it's a heroic action so your opponent can't really do anything about that um yeah it's just uh the limitation of it so if you want that more than once you're going to need to take more than one cavalier marshal uh Zenestra is a prayer you know chanted on a three so that is also conditional wild form is a spell so you also have to deal with enemy dispels potentially um so we're going to look at these things separately just to uh kind of break that out a little bit um you know looking at what you get like totally reliably and then what you can potentially get if you uh have these other things that you're not guaranteed all right so steel helms this is just without zenestra and wild form um cavaliers i did include cavalier marshal in this um so steel helms 
uh, their average move without a run, you're looking at 12.5. With a run, they get 16. And charge, 21.5. Um, that's a lot. And uh, very, very useful. Um, again, steel helms you can alpha strike with. And there are other things that you have available to you to buff up their saves, give them wards, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, your Cavaliers average move with this is going to be 20 inches on these guys. Run 24.5 and your charge average threat distance is 31 inches without Zenestra and Wild Form. Um, so that's a lot. Awful lot. Uh, and then we've got the Marshall on Griffin and Talia. Uh, they both just have the same uh, movement things that hit them and the same uh, base movement characteristic. So their average move will be 24 inches, run 28.5, and charge 32. So they also can easily alpha strike. And, you know, with the artifacts and command traits that are available to your Marshall on Griffin, as well as... Uh, your order that can uh, boost him up his first time in combat uh, and, you know, combining that again with um, the fact that he can issue two orders once per game, uh, he can just issue uh, that order as well as advanced information uh, just to himself. Uh, and then advanced information can also hit whatever else is around him. So, very long distance movement here. With Zenestra and Wild Form, uh, as you can see, we're adding quite a bit to that. Your average uh, threat range on the charge with your Steel Helms becomes 25 inches. Um, you know, if you get a big brick of those guys and throw them at your opponent, you can potentially uh, stick them in combat for a decent amount of time. And they. Uh, you know, you can take up to 30 of them because they're battle line. So uh, they're a cheap, like, alpha striking anvil sort of situation. They're not going to hit your opponent really hard, but um, they don't necessarily need to. Um, Cavaliers, their average charge range is going to look like 36.5 inches when you get all of these buffs put together. Um, you know, again, that's put them in the corner and they can hit the middle of the board, uh, turn one. Uh, the run at 26.5, you know, they, they can just go wherever, steal objectives, generally harass your opponent and be a problem for them. And then Marshall on Griffin and Talia, um, you know, looking very similar to that, their base move 26 on average. Uh, that's just crazy that just gets them wherever they want to be and they both also fly. So, you know, that's practically teleporting at that point. Uh, very, very powerful. <laughs> and then we're going to look at the thing that is just totally, totally silly in this army. All right. Your steam tank commander. <laughs> um, this is oddly enough, one of the fastest things in this army uh, because of being able to send power to the wheels and he is uh, a hero so he can issue orders to himself he can uh, you know use commands targeting himself uh, base movement of eight um, the steam tank commander uh, is considered to have a mount. So for Mistaven, you get the 2d6 move instead of just the regular d6. Advanced information, again, you can issue that to yourself, uh, an extra three inches on that. The run and charge you can get by sending power to the wheels, uh, get an extra inch on your run and then an extra inch on your charge. Uh, run, you can easily just command point a six uh, to get an extra six inches. Um, and then your average charge, seven inches, which is just you know, standard on 2d6. So without Zenestra and Wild Form, this thing's average threat range is 33 inches, which is 
insane. Um, and then you add it on Zenastra and Wild form, and your average uh, total threat range when you can get those off goes up to 38.5 inches. And, you know, if you just roll hot and roll all sixes, this thing can end up going 51 inches across the board. That is clear from one side to the other. Um, I, I, I don't know if they meant to make steam tanks this fast. Um, but you know, just having this thing flying around the board with a two up save, um, you know, it, it, you can give it a, uh, arcane tome to, uh, be able to mystic shield itself. Uh, there's other artifacts you can give it, you know, you could give it a ward save with it. The uh, Amulet of Destiny, uh, you know, this is just so stupid. Um, uh, Steam Tank Commanders are amazing. Uh, I am a big fan of Steam Tanks in this book. Uh, love it. It's going to be really fun. All right, so just summing things up at the end here. Um, the army can be really, really, really fast. Um, I think Misthaven is in my opinion it's the strongest sub faction it's the one that i like the best as everybody keeps saying movement wins games and that is just giving you extra movement for free um you know all you have to do is just be starting more than 12 inches from the enemy which you know you're basically always going to have units in that position um there's lots of different tools available to you you don't necessarily have to really build into this. Um, and uh, because you're not building into it, the stuff is just kind of available to you all the time. Um, your buff bubbles are pretty easy to manage. Um, a lot of these things are, uh, you know, Zenestra's board wide. The other things are just like wholly within 12 inches. The musicians are just in the unit um and then you know your free guild command core wholly within 12 and your advance in formation is going to have to be uh with your guy standing next to a hero to get that order but uh by the nature of how that order works you know you can issue the order then move it move the hero into position and then get the move on uh the unit so Again, I don't know if that is actually intended. I don't know if Games Workshop is going to decide to errata that at some point. But uh, yeah, it, this is a fun army. Um, I cannot wait to actually get my stuff on the table. Um, I'm still working on painting, rebasing, converting, all of that stuff. So um, that is currently my project. Um, I've got one last uh, GT outing with uh, my Maggotkin before we uh, move over to Cities of Sigmar for, uh, I don't know, probably the rest of the year. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then, you know, from there, we'll see. Uh, anyway, that's going to be it for now, guys. Thank you once again. I'll talk to you all later.